The Taliban says it's planning an inclusive caretaker government in Afghanistan after the group toppled the Western Bank administration in a stunning sweep earlier this month. Now we chat this afternoon to Gordon Duff, Veterans Today, who speaks to us live from the United States of America. Gordon, good day, greetings and welcome to the program on Radio Islam. Well, uh, it's good to be on Radio Islam again. I always Thank you enjoy- for availing yourself. Gordon, U.S. withdrawals from Afghanistan, was it a smart move by Biden? It was 20 years too late, uh, if anything. It was a move that had to be made. And uh, it's like pulling a a bandage off. You know, it's going to be messy. And, you know, there are 13 dead Americans and an awful lot more local people, a hundred or more, that died from the ISIS bombing uh, yesterday. But, uh, you know, I feel at this early point here to, to point out that, um, you know, ISIS migrated uh, from uh, prisons in Hasika in uh, northern Syria uh, and managed to get to Afghanistan somehow. The Iranians obviously didn't help them and they didn't take a boat. They had to have flown. And the only people that could have helped them do that were NATO people, Uh, MI6, maybe Indian intelligence, the RAW working with uh, the CIA, but um, planting ISIS in Afghanistan is a CIA ploy, uh, supposedly to offset the Taliban. Uh, creating ISIS uh, in Yemen was a CIA ploy uh, to justify U.S. involvement there. Creating ISIS in Syria was a U.S. MI6 ploy. Uh, Things I don't believe in, I don't believe in ISIS. Uh, And I certainly don't believe that people can travel around the world without getting on planes. And in today's world, you don't get on the planes without help from a government. I have trouble getting on planes. You know, it's hard for me. Maybe I need to join ISIS. It'd be a lot easier for me. (laughs) Yes. So is this the U.S. proxy at play now, trying to ruin the feel-good vibes after Taliban takeover brought some peace to a worn, torn nation? Well, you know, one of the obvious things, and I was uh, the first big debacle in uh, Vietnam, I was involved in that one. And uh, we were surprised that it took as long for the uh, North Vietnamese and Viet Cong to beat the South. It took months of, and there was some fairly hard fighting. Um, We always knew that Afghanistan's trillion dollar military Uh, more money was spent on the military for Afghanistan than the entire Chinese military, including their Navy. We could have built uh, for Afghanistan. We spent enough money on them to build them 20 aircraft carriers. They could have 1,000 F-35s and a space program. We we should have sent... uh, the Afghan National Police Force to the moon. We spent enough money to do that. Uh, And of course, can you imagine being a a soldier representing the U.S.-backed Kabul government being trained continually for 20 years of being trained by American mercenary contractors, 20 years of being taught by ignorant hillbillies teaching anybody in Afghanistan like they need to learn how to fight. These are the people who taught the world how to fight. You know, uh, it's been it's been a clown posse operation since day one. And um, we have to remember the history (coughs) that (coughs) supposedly 12 members of Al Qaeda were living in uh, Afghanistan, being paid for by the Saudi government, uh, that they were there as guests of Mullah Umar, supposedly. This is what we were told. And um, the U.S. had to go in, empower the 
Northern Alliance, the Uzbek and uh, Tajik uh, narcotics warlords to take over the country, set up a police state, set up death camps, kill thousands of prisoners of war, set up a uh, government that managed to turn Afghanistan into the world's largest narco state, the largest narco state anyone had ever imagined, uh, to set up human trafficking on a massive scale, uh, to turn women and children across Afghanistan into prostitutes, uh, and to unleash in that country foreign intelligence agencies, where India ran a section of the country for their uh, uh, covert war against Pakistan, where uh, the uh, Israelis and MI6 used Afghanistan to war on uh, Iran, and where the uh, U.S., of course, used Afghanistan to dump massive amounts of heroin, truckload after truckload, into the former uh, Soviet republics of the Caspian Basin. And uh, in the process, Western politicians owned businesses. When they left office, they were given massive mercenary contracts. Um, one well-known member of Congress uh, owned dry cleaning plants throughout Afghanistan, enough dry cleaning plants to clean the robes of the Saudi royal family for a thousand years. Those dry cleaning plants turned out one thing, processed heroin by the ton, enough to supply the world, enough to make heroin so cheap that school children here in the United States can afford to buy it, and they do millions of them, small children. Heroin is sold everywhere in the U.S. now. And uh, getting out of Afghanistan, was it time to do it? Oh, it was time. But now after the, uh, the attack, um, it's going to be a continued drone war by the United States. And as that drone war continues, that drone war no matter who's running it, Biden or Trump or anyone, that drone war is going to kill lots and lots of civilians. It's still going to kill civilians um, because the United States is just not very good at gaining intelligence or hiring anyone but criminal sociopaths as drone pilots. Yes. So, you know, th that is... Uh how we can analyze what has transpired uh, when one of the issues or one of the focal points in the uh, Western media's focus of Afghanistan in the days after the takeover by uh, Taliban was on the airport. And yesterday we had Mullah Zaif, who is the former foreign minister of Taliban to Pakistan. We had him on air and he said that the Afghans were receiving fake messages saying that the U.S. will give them a visa and a new life in overseas. And that is why they kept flocking to the Kabul airport. Uh, what do you make of, you know, the uh, the groups of people heading towards the Kabul airport? Well, it's uh, it's now easy to handle people through social media. You know, I was in um, uh, Nigeria, uh, staying in Abuja some years ago. I was there for a uh, presidential inauguration and uh, got out of my hotel and, uh, you know, was driving uh, uh, into the government compound and I saw a, a young man sleeping in a culvert in a ditch in the side of the road and uh, uh, he had absolutely nothing except he had an iPhone and I watched him picking up his messages. He slept in a culvert. Um, the use of the internet has empowered criminal organizations in calling intelligence agencies anything other than criminal organizations is insanity. All they do is commit crimes. That's part of the anything that requires secrecy is is there to hide criminality. And all of them do this. And it isn't just the American agencies. They're all criminal organizations. 
they all work together quite well, even the ones that are supposedly enemies are not enemies. They're all, they all have one client, world organized crime. And uh, I think people are beginning to see this and coordinating their efforts for them is Google Corporation, along with Facebook. Google is the worst of all. Google profiles everyone in the world, including that kid I've talked about that slept in that ditch in Abuja. Uh, there's a Google profile on him of what it takes to send him to the airport or make him throw a firebomb. And they make sure that every one of us gets the emails and messages and search results necessary to keep us as off balance, crazy, prejudiced, stressed as possible, to make us compliant as possible. And you know, we wonder who the boss is. Is Google aiding the intelligence agency? It was, it was certainly formed by the CIA, funded initially by the CIA, or is, is Google all of the intelligence agencies in the world now? Does it run all of them? You know, the massive amount of information they've got certainly sitting on decades of every search I've made, every email I've written, they've read. Uh, I can't look at anything online without being swamped with the ads for whatever it is. In a second, with the ability that computers have and the rudimentary, maybe not so rudimentary AIs, artificial intelligence, profiling us every one of us and feeding the information necessary to control us to move the last vestiges of freedom if we are stupid enough to watch the news to pick up that device that phone that laptop that ipad and look at that screen yeah i expect to be sent to the airport and expect to be blown up and if these people were blown up you know uh was google corporation part of it probably uh, will billions of dollars be made based on this, a ter this terrorist attack? Oh, yes. Who's going to make the money? Raytheon Corporation is going to make tons. Lockheed is going to make tons. That attack, 13 Marines dead, which is what we worry about. A hundred other people, which Americans are told not to worry about because they're not ours. But uh, yes. their death is going to turn out huge amounts of funding for American corporations. Every disaster has got a profitable side and then you wonder in every single one who really staged it. And when you're seeing information, as you pointed out, flowing through the internet, feeding people into that terror attack. And uh, there are adequate controls in the internet that could have stopped this, that could have identified it. That's why intelligence agencies are supposed to exist to identify it and identify the terror threat and see that the attack was coming and to do something, if possible, to mitigate it. Although I I couldn't see how that could easily have been done. But was there an effort to do that? Uh, I wonder, I would like to know. Yes. Yeah, those are the questions that we certainly need to ask. Uh, we always appreciate your time on Radio Islam, Gordon. It's always such a pleasure to get your commentary into your thoughts, which obviously gives us the true perspective on the things. Thank you for always availing yourself. It's always great, and I, I love Radio Islam. Thank you. Go well. We love chatting to you, and we look forward to chatting again in the future. Bye-bye.